the uh, driver of the number 88 National Guard Chevrolet, and I think uh, Chase Elliott will be here shortly. We're going to go ahead and start with Dale, though. Dale, I have to go run off to a meeting, but I'm going to turn it over to my crack assistant here. Dale, talk a little bit about uh, racing here at Darlington uh, Raceway. That was so much history. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's been around a long, long time, and one of the toughest racetracks physically that we race on. <clears throat> Tough track mentally. 500 miles here is a is a really, really long race because the the tracks are quite a quite a big racetrack, and the pace uh, slows down, and you're working so hard in the corner. So just one lap around here is a lot of work, and uh, to to have to run 500 miles, it's uh, it's a pre pretty tough test of of man and machine, and um, you know this track's starting to gray up pretty good. So I'm looking forward to getting out there and practice and seeing what we got. All right, let's go right here, uh, Dale uh, Ben White with Lexington Dispatch. Have you? I know you're very busy with your Sprint Cup schedule, but have you had a chance to watch Jeffrey Earnhardt at all and see how he's doing on the racetrack? Yeah, I watch him every week uh, during the nationwide races. I think he's done some, some a couple good things with that with that team. Had a great qualifying effort at Bristol and got spun out in the first lap of the race. Um, and uh, he's had some other good situations that I've seen and where he's had some speed and practice during qualifying and in particularly uh, in the race, uh, he's done he's done well in a few on a few occasions. So yeah, we keep an eye on him. Um, me and him are close. He lives real, real close to me. Um, he's supposed to come over to the house Sunday to hang out a little bit. So I mean, we we're, we're, we stay pretty tight. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, Dale, since Chase is coming up, uh, I heard you say I believe it was post race California. Uh, after that race there, you said one thing. You said he's better than he knows he is, and then you said. Uh, I can't, something to the effect of I can't imagine anybody or anything being a better influence on him uh, than Bill is on him. Could you sort of elaborate on both those things, and especially uh, when you talked about you couldn't imagine a better influence, can you kind of tell what you see Bill doing and maybe more importantly not doing with him or to him, and maybe could you contrast that as your first year in Bush with your dad, the way he handled that? Yeah, I, uh, what I mean about Bill is just Bill's demeanor, his calm demeanor, and his uh, he's not excitable, and I think that helps Chase a lot. I think that's molded Chase into the in person that he is. That that's that you know Chase as Chase uh, has grown up. I think he's um, taken a lot of his father's uh, mental makeup and intuition and uh, just, you know certain personality traits that had been a, you know been an, a big help to to bill in his racing career so uh, just basically how calm bill is and how much of a student to to racing bill was i think that chase really is very similar and um you know he uh you know, he's just got a lot of talent. I think there's some every once in a while there's some guys that come in here that are that are they don't know how good they are. They ain't, you know they haven't they haven't competed against this type of competition before, and drove uh, cars this well prepared before uh, or been in a series of this nature. So they don't really know how much they stack up against the competition. But as a outsider looking in, you can see certain guys have more than others and um chase is right re really ahead of the game right now so he uh should continue to progress and continue to learn and hopefully uh real quick in the next 24 to you know 24 months he's going to turn into something pretty pretty awesome that'll that'll be a force in the sport for a while so i really um i'm excited about it uh just to have a guy like that come in with that pedigree and um he's got uh you know real potential to be a force for a long time so it'll be exciting 
And one quick follow-up on how y'all got together. Chase, uh, the other day in talking with him, he felt like, as far as a connection with Rick and with you, uh, that maybe James Finch, who I know is a good friend of yours, Finch hanging out at Mobile, Pensacola, and the places where Chase raced, that Finch might have been the primary guy who connected all of y'all and, and kept telling you about Chase. Bill thinks it might have been several people. How, 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 do you, how, did, how did you and Rick find out about Chase and was it was Finch the primary guy? I can't say I can't speak for Rick on the deal. Um, I would, uh, if I had to guess, I'd say that Finch had some great words to say and influenced some of, some of Rick's opinions. But uh, you know, I just kept hearing him winning races and uh, beating good competition, winning winning races against guys that uh, were surprising, you know, and. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, he was doing some good work in the late models, super late models, and uh, you know he was ma he was handling himself in a real professional manner. As important as it is that he's successful on the track, it's also equally and maybe more so important that he's he's a level head off the track. That makes it so much easier to deal with him, to want to work with him, to want to help him, and to market him. Let's go with Jeff right here, then David, and then Matt, and his, well, his neighbor left. Jeff Buck from USA Today. I'm behind one of the cameras. But um, after last week, how did you get over it? Um, how much time did you spend <laughs> this week uh, beating yourself up over it? Um, and how was the reaction on Twitter compared to what you thought it was going to be? Because I know that um, after Bristol, you were pleasantly surprised that it wasn't as bad as you thought. Um, I didn't hear the bit about Bristol, but... Um... Yeah, I guess Twitter can be a help in a situation like that. I mean, my fans certainly have my back and help you, tell you to brush it off. Don't worry about it. I mean, I'm sure there's some people on there saying the opposite, but uh, I didn't hear, I didn't see many of those or any of those. But um, there's a positive and a negative to everything. And uh, but I uh, I think that um, I didn't really spend a lot of time on Twitter this week because we were working. Uh, at, Michigan and I tried to uh, we had some things to do Thursday and uh, I just don't you know what Twitter's a bit of a playground and I don't want to horse around if we're not doing good so uh, I sort you know I don't want to be on there goofing off and making light of the situation because it was a uh, you know it was a frustrating mistake and um, it was you know something I don't take very lightly. We were able to just be able to get back in the car and test at Michigan was a big help for me to get past it and to get focused on the next race. This is a tough event at Darlington and we, we you know we've got some decent runs here but we haven't really had anything uh you know we haven't really come here and had a had a race that we thought we lost, you know. So um this is going to be a tough place to come rebound. Uh, but we're going to give it our give it our best, and I'm I'm just glad to be back at the track. Go ahead and get a race or two in the bank and put it behind us. Let's go, David, real quick. David Caravella, NASCAR.com. Dale, speaking of Michigan, the speeds you guys returning this week. I mean, how realistic that we might see those during the race weekends up there, where the conditions just so different. That's kind of stands on standing on its own. Yeah, the track should slow down as it rubbers up, tighten up, uh, get slicker. The seams will get slicker. Um, so I don't think we'll see those kind of speeds. We saw that's best, that's basically what we saw in in practice there last time. So we may see those speeds in practice, but I doubt we'll see those in the race. The race will slow down quite a bit, or enough. But uh, I think we learned some things. You know, I was really happy to have an opportunity to test with Goodyear, and get an opportunity to to get on the racetrack and learn. And we did go through a a lot of different tires and a lot of different construction and uh the dual zone tire we tried a couple different ones and we went through they had about eight different sets of tires that they wanted to learn some things about some for michigan some for kansas and other places so it was a, a productive test and uh, even though we were cut short on the first day uh, we were able to get a lot of information for goodyear that i hope is going to be helpful to them and so it was good to be a part of that. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I love, you know, returning laps at Michigan. Uh, it's a super fast racetrack. And, 
you know, we weren't able to really work on the setups of the cars that much at a tire test, but I like the speed our car had compared to the guys I saw there. Let's welcome in uh, Chase Elliott. Chase is uh, NASCAR Next Driver and driver of the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Uh, first for you, Dale. Um, JR Motorsports has come uh, had a great start this year and uh, got picked up a big win last week at Texas with Chase behind the wheel. Uh, talk about the process. Uh, yeah, we, we feel real fortunate to have Chase in the, in the, in the program. And uh, he was going to go somewhere and be successful, and we were lucky to be able to work with him, feel fortunate to have him, and uh, be able to work with Bill. Bill's been a lot of fun to work with. He's having him spot for me a couple times has been a blast. That's like a added perk to the whole deal. But, um, yeah, Chase has been a real pleasure. He's done a great job. He did an awesome job in Texas uh, getting the car to victory lane. That team is poised for uh, success, and, and uh, you know, I feel like that they have a uh, great opportunity to continue uh, continue that and continue winning races. So it's just very exciting time for us, for Napa. Uh, and, you know, we just got, we just got uh, to sit here and wait and keep working hard and watch it play out. So uh, it's, it's going to be a long season, and there's going to be some ups and downs, a lot of things to learn, and... You know, it's it's not all going to be roses, but there's you know, it's it's uh it's definitely pointing in the right direction, and we just want to give Chase a great opportunity to to progress and learn as as well as he can in the cars we have. 